of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray Finley goes, that is no joke, folks. That picture that we took was about an hour ago. Um, the mailman came and said, hey, you got a visitor? And we went and looked, and by golly, there he was. That's only the second or third one that I've seen here. Uh, one was in the house many years ago. But over a 28-year, 29-year period to only see three of those. Now, people don't realize this, but this type of a rattlesnake, the uh, Arizona traditional diamondback is not lethal. It is to small children and people that are very, very debilitated. But for a healthy person, uh, it's going to be like a rabid dog bite, which is far worse than a, than a rattlesnake bite. But uh, if you go up into the mountains, the White Mountains above Phoenix, they have the black mamba. And you don't want to get bit by one of those because it's sayonara, vaya con Dios. Hasta luego. Any way you want to look at it, it's goodbye in any language. I want to post a chart here from yesterday's show with Jeff Huge. To me, it's a very, very interesting one. It shows the VIX index and how it shows the bearishness and bullishness in the market. And as you can see here, there is virtually no bears out there. This is the lowest reading in several years that we have right now. And as you're looking at this time frame up in here, you'll see that each of these retracements here is a 61% retracement of the high that we made way back in December. To me, that means something. Right now, uh, today's market, uh, when we opened, it went down a little bit lower to hit 33,800. That was an ABCD pattern in the uh, Dow Jones index, and it's rallied 200 points uh, so far today, and it could probably continue rallying. We're in the zone now, folks, because we've got the uh, lunar eclipse. Let's try it again, Larry. We've got the solar eclipse, and we have the new moon, and we have the new moon man himself, the wolf trader. Shane Smolian will be our guest at the break, talking to us about uh, these different planets that are lining up, much like we've seen with uh, uh, Norm Winsky and also with uh, Tim Botts. So this is big-time stuff, folks. Whether it means much or not, not really sure, but you know what? Nobody else is either, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. This is what I'm looking at from a real simple, you know, uh, back-in-the-envelope math that works relatively well for me. I've been posting this and doing videos about this all week, and that's what we're watching here is this type of a move. And we're over this zone right now. That doesn't mean it can explode and go to the upside. Far from it. You can easily do that. But the thing is, it is not fallen down very much today all it did was make an ABCD the ABCD on the S&P folks measured <laughs> do it yourself you know this is not hard rocket sciences it measured a 4143 where did it go 4143 and we rallied to 4168 so far so that's all it is it's just uh, just look at that pattern and that's the one that I go by live by and Hopefully never die by, but that's neither here nor there. Let's move on to one other one from Jeff Huge, which I thought was very interesting. This is his interpretation. Uh, let's blow it up so we can see it a little bit better here. Boy, folks, I tell you, with the, with the weather here, going to be about 89 today. And, uh, boy, the, the allergies really hit me. And everybody in the neighborhood was out looking at the snake because we don't see too many of them around here. And so I was out there for about 40 minutes, and then I realized, oh, dear. And then when I came in, and then when I came in, I could feel it in my lungs. But this is the interpretation that Jeff is looking at now. He's looking at a potential to see 2,200 in the S&P. Well, that may may not be true, and it may take a little bit longer than one might think, but it may take even less time than people think. The other char chart that uh, Jeff showed us, that Jeff told us that was very interesting 
was the ones that was, I'm bringing this to your attention, folks, because I think it's that important. That's why. Let's get this up here. This shows the fear and greed in the market that we're definitely out into the, the greed. And boy, if you think there's not complacency, you should listen to Bloomberg and uh, CNBC because uh, they uh, there's not many bears around uh, watching uh, the TV. And I, I check for what the foreign currencies are doing in the markets. I wanted to see how the U.S. dollar reacted from that level. So, so that's what we're watching here. Now, I, I posted yesterday the uh, chart of the uh, if you'll remember, let's get this up here. Oh, shucks. Wrong button, Larry. Just a minute. I'll get it right here. We should be able to get it. Where did I put it? Oh, dear, 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 dear. Uh, nope, I haven't got it. I was going to show you the chart of the uh, tray. Uh, oh, doggone it. Um, Folks, I had to take effects of phenidine this morning because the allergies got me so bad because I'm a little, it, it's made my mouth dry and I'm a tiny bit dizzy, so bear with me. I'm dizzy most of the time anyway, so this is nothing unusual. Uh, I wanted to show you the uh, chart of the uh, <sighs> treasury notes and treasury bonds that they should be in a zone to start rallying from. And we've had about a little point and a half rally here in bonds today. And the uh, notes took off. So if you're in that position, uh, put your stop at your break-even point, let it rip, and uh, see if it'll go that way. You're basically in a risk-free trade, and you don't have to uh, don't have to worry about it. The other one that's really getting interesting, folks, is we are approaching the 61% retracement again in one of our favorite cross rates, which is the euro versus the U.S. dollar, and you can see we're almost up there again. I have a story to tell you, folks. I had a phone call from a very nice fellow up in Canada, and uh, he had made a mistake in a trade. He had sold uh, gold short accidentally. I, I went through the sequence of, of orders that he had, and he was through interactive brokers, and I told him to pull all those orders to make sure the sequence was correct because he was leaving for a vacation, and he was going to be out of contact for out of contact contact for a few days. Well, anyway, he shorted gold. This was a month ago. He short for a scalp. He sold gold at 1840, and then he had an order to cover it. And he thought that he was flat. Well, when he got to the place where his vacation started, he couldn't get a phone card set up, so it was a few days, and so he let let it slip. And when he got back, he realized that he was still short. A contract of gold, and that has an eighteen thousand dollar open loss. And I said, the one thing I know for sure is interactive brokers doesn't make mistakes too often. So, if you're listening, Mr. LG, I hope you're going to be okay. You will be okay, but make sure you put a stop in. What I would do, I frankly would put a stop at the high. At, you know, another few thousand dollars from this level don't make a whole lot of difference. And it may have been the high because we hit that 78% retracement on the weekly uh, in the gold market. But I, I didn't know what else to say to you because uh, that's a monster. I've had, I'll, when we get back from the break, I will be happy to tell you uh, some of the ones that happened to me when I was at Drexel Burnham that was like that. And uh, I think you'll get a big kick out of those. All right, let's take a little break. 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Okay, we're back folks and we have Jeremiah from Phoenix, Arizona asking about the Australian dollar. Good morning to you, young man. How are you doing? Hi, good morning. Sir, uh, I just had a question. I I believe I'm seeing a Gartley pattern on the Australian U.S. dollar uh, on the 30-minute chart. You I'm doing all my are. I, I think I did all my measurements, right? I, I'm kind of learning this, so it's kind of well different. It only takes about one day to learn it all. Uh, two days if you're a slow learner. Some people has gone as three days before they become a professional trader, but you're on your way. Just remember, it's baby <laughs> steps, and trading is a journey. It's not a destination, but you are correct. That is a Gartley on both the daily, and it's also a Gartley on the 30-minute. I did check it. I posted it into the room so the folks could take a look at it, but that's exactly what you're seeing. Now, remember, these patterns have a tendency to fail, Jeremiah, so make sure that you put a stop in and don't get uh, stuck like our good friend up in Alberta, Canada did with a – $18,000 open loss. So remember that. You've got to always follow through on what you're doing. Okay, okay. And I got the, I'm trying for the, on the 30 minute chart, I'm trying for a 61% target there. You know, that okay. retracement from A to uh, A to D retracement, 61%. That's correct. That's, what, that's your okay. first objective. That is, is exactly what your first objective is supposed to be. Okay, I'll just make sure I'm reading you right. I'm studying your book, the I'm oh, yeah. your book, okay. Trade that's What You the one, See. That's the one I so sent that's you kind of what I'm going I remember off. that, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, no, so. I appreciate it. Gosh, man, this is, uh, I don't know. I, well. I'm good. I, I'm already being successful, and I'm going to continue. So I, I think uh, I'm just real excited about this. This is, uh, this is like this is the Super good. Bowl to me. Fun. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm I'm gonna be uh, <laughs> gonna be old pretty soon. I'm not old. I'm older, but I've been doing this for 62 years, and I'd love it the same day as the day I started it. So I'm glad that I can say that. So, <laughs> all right, Jeremy. Sure. Listen, sure. thanks I, I for calling in. You call in any time. We love to hear from you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. You bet. Okay. Uh, back to the gentleman from uh, Alberta. Uh, really, I know uh, it hurts to see uh, to see a loss like that, but 
he had a good outlook, and I know he's going to continue on. But the, the problem was he didn't check in, uh, at least to check to make sure everything was clear. Now, when I was at Drexel, I went on two vacations over a six-year period. One of them was in uh, South America. The other one was in uh, Hawaii. And on the Hawaii one, uh, I was sure I was flat, and I was. But what happened was one of the customers had an open order in that didn't, uh, that didn't cancel it, okay, and it got filled. And so he was blaming me. So Drexel, being the wonderful company that they were, and this was part of the business, they dumped it into my account, the Air account. So that means it was mine. And it was in the gold market. And it was short gold. And it had a $1,900 loss when they put it in there. And they just left it there. By the time I came back, three weeks later, not knowing that I was short gold all that time, it paid for the whole vacation. And uh, that was a really big move because gold had dropped a huge amount and uh, was able to pay for the thing. But, you know, <laughs> to sit there with a big position like that is really not much fun. And you don't like to see that uh, happen uh, very often. OK, now I want to get on to a couple of things that I still think are very, very important. I do believe and I say this with all sincerity that I do believe within these next few days we're going to start down. And instead of bouncing every day like we've done on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it won't be bouncing. So we're going to find out. And remember, these patterns fail. And when they do fail, <clears throat> they fail badly. And there's a lot of reasons that thinking that this thing could fail. Apple computers being one of them. Because it, well, it's Apple company. It's not a computer. But anyway, uh, they're still acting strong. It's still trading above 66. Now, that's a positive sign. Now, the market was down sharply at one time this morning, uh, last night, but it's come back and held up pretty good. So I think that's important that we pay close attention to these things as we see them unfold. And I have one other chart that I wanted to show you. Uh, that is the, oh, I did that one for, I want to show this one again because I think this is the most important because uh, Norm Winsky talked about this a little bit. But if you look at this, every time the VIX has gotten to these levels where there's no bears, uh, that's when you have a pretty good correction. But the thing is, this is the important part right here, the important part. This is where the 61% retracement of the high back here is. And you have an ABCD, and it's 27 days up, 27 days up. Now, we're in the 29th day today. So, but that's that's supposed to be because we have all of these things happening astrologically that our good friend, Mr. Uh, oh, <clears throat> sorry, our good friend, Mr. Shane Smolian has been trying to tell us and he will be telling us when uh, he reaches us in just about uh, seven minutes from now. I wanted to mention one other one that's very interesting now, folks, because we finally, we had a couple of, had a very nice trade in soybeans. And I've got to bring this up here because the structure in the soybean market has shifted a little bit. Uh, we end up taking a 10 cent loss uh, after we took that 30 cent profit uh, two days ago. We bought it back uh, at the 382 retracement and it failed and it lost 10 cents. And so we're out of that and uh, we're waiting to see the next thing that's going on. In fact, all of the grains are so, are selling off today, or at least they were earlier. I haven't checked them recently, but that's another one that looks uh, pretty uh, pretty promising anyway. Let's just see. Uh, oh, yes, they're off. Uh, we got soybeans off 14 cents, and we got wheat off 14 cents, and we've got corn off 9 cents. So all of that is telling us that, uh, yep, we're in an area where we could run into some really uh, serious uh, – things as far as uh, uh, what we call it uh, correction going on here in the grains but I'll do that a little bit uh, a little bit later I'm still a little bit shaken up about that rattlesnake folks because when you see a live rattle and boy he makes a lot of noise he's a baby he's only about oh four and a half feet long and he probably weighs about 10 pounds and uh, when the uh, the fire department comes out they have a snake patrol and this young fellow was a uh, really buffed out dude. And he's got all the safety equipment on. He takes off his asbestos gloves that protect it. And he reaches down and he grabs the snake from right behind his head. And the snake, of course, wraps his, his uh, body around the, his arm and he takes him out. 
you know, into the, uh, the wooded area here near the house where the mountains start, and he uh, lets him go because they don't like to, to kill things that don't deserve to be killed. But uh, that, that it was a little scary, and people in the neighborhood just got a real— uh, uh, they got to see him firsthand until the guy showed up that it was— uh, than what we were watching here today. Boy, I can't believe I'm going to be salvaged here by our good friend Shane Smolian to uh, talk to us about stelliums. Because stelliums is why I believe in astrology, folks. So we had those in December of 1974, 1982, 1987, 2008. And Shane says we got one right now. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for The Wolf Trader. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, I hope we have Mr. Shane Smolian in the room. How are you there, Mr. S? Are you there, is sir? Is this Duke and Duke? No, it, it, it is a General Hospital, Philadelphia, <laughs> Pennsylvania. This is uh, that uh, 1776. The Philadelphia Hospital started, and uh, all of Sarah's grandchildren, all three of them, were born there. But uh, and you know, I'm okay. It's just the allergies, you know. And I was out in the middle of the thing, and everybody was coming over to see the snake and stuff. So. Anyway, that's like, that's so, exciting. Snakes are exciting. Oh yeah, well they, <laughs> they are, but they uh, you know they're they're little critters. They don't like to be bothered. In fact, when he when you go by him, he makes so much noise to let you know he's there. He he doesn't want to be bothered. And uh, but they, we have a snake patrol to take care of. Yeah, I've been here thirty years. That's the third one I've seen. This is the only second one on my property. So 
Yeah, yeah we, you know, we have yeah. water moccasins down here. I just oh, went to NASA yeah. with my son last week, and they the bus driver was telling us they had a 10-foot rattlesnake right when they get out of the bus there at the, the terminal. So, yeah, yeah they can, they can get pretty pythons big. pythons down there that eat Volkswagens, I understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, but that's because yeah. they put them there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they go on these hunt, hey, these python hunts in the Everglades, yeah. Speaking of rattlesnakes, what's going on with this market? Larry, there's a lot going on. We'll get started with this today. So, yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna. Do, I have a lot today to talk about. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a little bit of the Fed background from last time I spoke about it, and then I'm gonna get into some forecasting models, and I'll let you know where where I think we stand. So, first of all, S&P headlines. These are some headlines that I just put every day in the the market update. So, I think the bear market is likely over. Uh, we covered all our long term short positions back in October. Uh, the Fed juice continues to build str uh, strength behind the scenes. Uh, there's a Saturn cycle, which we're going to talk about today. That's That made an important low on 320, and we're also sitting in another trough on that, ready to go higher. Uh, and so the forecasting models have all flipped now to decisively bullish. They were kind of mixed for a few days here, but now they're all flipping bullish. So okay. I think, you know, that to me, I haven't seen something like this in a while. So the conditions are getting better uh, for a rally for sure. Um, this okay. recent banking crisis was related to liquidity issues, but the Fed conducted these bailouts behind the scenes to provide liquidity. Uh, and so the assets have increased, but not QE. So this is important because we know now how the Fed is going to respond. We didn't know that. And so when we had this first little crisis, which many people think is going to continue, I don't think it is, but we didn't know what was going to happen. You know, what was the Fed going to do? Were they going to start doing more QE? So they kind of did this quasi QE where they increased the assets, uh, through a, a, an alternative method. So sometimes when we think of assets, we think of treasuries, mortgage-backed securities, corporate bonds, or asset-backed securities, which they get involved with in, with the consumer market, foreign currencies, physical assets, but also loans. Anytime you have loans, discount window, discount window or bank term funding program, which they just created this out of thin air, they created a whole new program, that's an asset. So uh, if we look at this balance sheet here, they were going through this whole QT period here, and then instantaneously we had this big spike that pretty much erased about two thirds of that. Now they're since coming back down again. They're selling off some more treasuries, but the point is that we we know the playbook now, the Fed, and I think that's really really important. So uh, this is what's important for investors. The last meeting was important because they solidified their stance. So on the surface, they're going to take these slow hikes. They might even pause, but behind the scenes, they're providing bailouts and stimulus. So. Like I said, we didn't know the playbook. Now we know the playbook. So the Fed is actually in a good position here because they can still cut rates and begin QE at any time they choose. So I always make this sports analogy. That it's like, you know, you have your second, your first string, your second string, your third string, your fourth string players. They come in when you've got a big lead. The Fed is, has their fourth string players in the game right now. They're not even trying. And so we have to understand that from that perspective. And, and the one, you know, the gold standard that I always use is COVID because that was a big te test of the Fed. And so when they were able to reverse the markets during COVID, I think that's really the standard when they were really trying. They're not even trying right now. So we're having these surge in the internals since October. Um, we are having Fed use 3.0 in a buy. And so multiple systems are turning up now. So that's a bullish situation uh, for the S&P. So just I want to look at I'm going to look at the S&P from many different angles here to try to I'm going to try to find some holes in this. I mean, the one hole that you could look at right now is what you just show with that VIX chart, which is which is pretty low. But from my experience, when you have the Fed involved with this, uh, the, the biggest pro so there's two things now you can get over complacency and then FOMO or fear of missing out. To me, I think the big problem here with the Fed when they're when the Fed juice is pushing up, okay, that the biggest problem is more FOMO. You get these people fear of missing out and you get short covering rallies and all this stuff more so than the complacency. So we have this force behind the scenes, which of course is the Fed. And so this is the, the 50 days sitting above the 200. To me, this is a beautiful setup here. It's, it's just been, it's been creeping up there uh, and people are gonna be paying more and more attention to this. We have the same situ, this was the, that was the NASDAQ. Uh, S&P, similar situation. S&P to me looks very, very nice into here. Now this was the banking crisis down here. And you know th this, this was a big test here because we had all of this banking nonsense going on, and um, and the market didn't want to go down, and the market no, and market not. actually the actual yeah. market actually went up during this, yeah. and so sure to me is. this to me this was the whole situation here with the the gilt operation in Britain. 
I felt like the bear market was likely over right around here based upon yeah. what the Fed was doing. Again, I watched the central banks. That's what I look for. I don't really care too much, even so much about the economy, because since 2009, the central banks really dominate this show. So I think that the Fed is in a good position right now, really, really good position. So I think from that perspective, and especially just looking at that sitting up there, you know, you would think that after a banking crisis that we would have these horrible sell-offs and panic, but that's not what we're seeing. We see a lot no. of people panicking online. We see all these videos telling us every day that the world's going to end, but the market has been holding up very well. And so that's a very important clue going forward here that this market does not want to go down, uh, especially in the face of that bad news. And then I also brought up something last month in the newsletter, which was this. The banking failures in 2009 actually increased and they peaked two years after the market had bottomed. In other words, the S&P was rallying for two years and the bank failures were increasing. So that that really has nothing to do with the long term picture here. When we look at bank failures, I know 2008 was a different situation than now. And there, there, there's different failures for different reasons. But what I'm saying is that has not one has nothing to do with the other. We have to keep our eye focused on what's going on yeah. with the Fed here. Um, so. What this is here, this is the Fed internals, and you can see here in October, there was a big shift in the tone here in the Fed internals. So you can see that to me, this is when these lows were coming in, and you saw a big change in the character of the Fed and, and the liquidity here. Now you can see the spike here, and of course, the, you know, this is dealing with the whole banking situation, and they were all of these loaning, loan facilities. And you can see they had a little bit of a pullback here. They're trying to sell off a few treasuries. But for the most part, this is a very strong situation here that we're seeing. And the volatility is getting really low. I don't know if you see down here, that's the Bollinger bandwidth. Now, that doesn't tell us the direction of the move, but it tells us that a big move is likely coming soon. And so when the, vol when the volatility gets that low, it's all often followed up with high volatility. So <clears throat> just something to think about there. Uh, another chart I want to point out here is – so th this is the blue arrows here. I want to point this out first. This is our quad lunar cycle which has been doing very well. Uh, you can see here, here's the low on 324, then it goes up to 44, down on 414. It's in a buy right now until about 425. But the Fed juice 3.0, which which is it's a neural network, which base measures the market versus what the Fed is doing, just went into a buy today. So, so everything now is starting to roll to the buy side. And so I think we have a good chance here now, a good setup here for this market to head higher. And again, the only knock you would say would be the VIX concept. But again, I think the bigger problem right now is FOMO with the Fed, because when they start pushing this thing up, you start getting those short covering rallies. That's the biggest problem. So we'll talk about that when we get back. And we sure will, folks. The Wolf Trader Saints Molly will be back after these few messages from our sponsors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Shane Smolly and TheWolfTrader.com. Please tell us what you're looking at next, my friend. Sure. Um, so we've established the fact that Fed, the Fed has solidified their policy. We know what they're going to do. s and is holding up. Technicals looking good. Fed use in a buy. Quad Lunar in a buy. Now, I do track the, the VIXI. I have a pairs trade. I have this thing called the Wolf Spread Trader. It's one of our trading systems that we give for traders. And it's a pairs trade. So I track the VIXI in terms of a pairs trade, right? So this goes short on the VIXI on 322 and long on S&P on 322. It's still long. Uh, this histogram down here shows you the strength of the trade. So when it's green, that means you're supposed to buy the S&P and, and uh, lavender, you short the VIXI. So it's a pairs trade. So it's not a direct signal, but it's still in a buy. And so I don't really see a reversal there uh, yet on that. Now, geomagnetic activity. Let's talk about this. This is the big wild card that can send the market lower. If a big storm comes, uh, it can even overpower the Fed to the downside. Now, notice that there's a seasonal pattern here. So we're in April, and you can see here that this is the peak, and then it starts dropping. So May and then June. I really think that we made it through April really without any major storms. I mean, there was one that was supposed to come, and it didn't come. Uh, but for the most part, once we get into May and June, it starts dropping, and that that is a bullish sign for the S and P. So again, we escaped, we dodged some bullets in April. I thought we would get a we didn't get the storm, and the fact that this is coming down more bullish activity. Now, let's keep going down the bull train here, okay? I, I, I it's just all bull, 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 okay? Uh, bull market. So uh, I'm going to show you the solar eclipse. So we talked about this. So you know this happened overnight. Uh, so typically, this is the Dow Jones. Now, I, I went back on this to the, it's like to the 1800s on this one. So it's got a lot of data here, but you can see that w this is an efficiency test. So this is what does the Dow Jones do across a solar eclipse? It rallies and it rallies for about 10 days. So we're right here at the zero point. So this is suggesting that the S&P is going to have a rally and the Dow the equity markets are going to rally for about 10 days. Uh, so I, you know, that's bullish. I, we also have the Bradley. You asked me to do the Bradley. Uh, this mm -hmm. is still rising. Now, this rises until May, and then it falls. But to be honest with you, Larry, this is not really my preferred model. Uh, I prefer mm -hmm. other models, particularly the Saturn cycle. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk about this now. And so these are, again, these are forecasting models. But the, this is gen the Saturn cycle. Saturn just changed signs. And so this cycle is generally bullish. This is bullish until 2025. Uh, and there's another one that I look at, which is a combined right. Saturn, which is bullish until all the way through this year. Uh, there's a peak coming in July and then another one in October. So we're currently in a trough, which to me, again, this is another bullish setup right now setting up here. So this this is what this looks like. That's the uh, Saturn in this different signs. But you can see this is over here. This is Pisces. And so once it heads into Pisces, it goes up for about another year and a half or maybe two years before it turns back down. Uh, so this suggests that we have a long way to go to the upside here on the S&P, that this is this is likely a low that we've seen, and we're gonna continue to rally here all the way into 2025. So to me, this is, I really like, if I had to pick one planet that gives the best cycles, it's Saturn. Saturn gives very nice cycles uh, across time. Now you can use other planets and cycle periods, but to me, I really like Saturn. So this is a long-term Saturn, so again, bullish. 
Now there's another Saturn cycle, which I use, I'm using this for the year. This, this guy is sitting in a trough right now. Now this one came into this low right around March, March the 20th. It's sitting in a trough. It's going to push up again until July and then it's going to push up again until October. So I, to me, no, you know, when I start looking at this market from so many different angles, and it's bullish, it's bullish, it's bullish, it's bullish. To me, this is a very positive sign for the S&P 500 mm -hmm. going forward. I mean, sometimes you see one going up, the other going down, and all, but that's not really what we see, except for the Bradley. We really kind of see an agreement here that this is a solid phase coming up here for, for the equity market. So that's the S&P forecast. I don't know if uh, anybody has any questions. I can, I'm going to go into a little bit about the flight to quality now. Uh, I'm going to do a webinar on Saturday about what I call the big three flight to quality. So the big three flight to quality. Um, what is this all about? Why do we care about this? Uh, this yeah. is going to relate directly to I have a theory about gold and Bitcoin and all this stuff here. It's going to relate to that yeah. uh, because based upon what's going on here. So big three flight to quality. We'll talk about this on Saturday some more. But I just want to give you a little bit of a preview here. There are three very important markets to watch when you have a panic, okay? So like in the modern age, it used to just be gold and the bond primarily, right? I mean, there were some other, you know, utilities and things like that. But for the most part, gold and bond used to be where people ran. But now we have our friend Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is now in the equation and it's, it's a direct competitor to gold. I've talked about this. These are two wildly different uh, groups of people in terms of their attitudes and belief mm -hmm. systems and the way that they look at the world. Uh, big, you know, the crypto people tend to be more optimistic, excited, and gold bugs tend to be more pessimistic. And this is the only thing you can trust. And so this, you have two different conflicts here. Uh, but these, all three of these, and the bond, these were all different flights to quality. So when we had that banking failure, we had a knee-jerk reaction, and everybody f ran to their flight of quality of choice, right? So they ran to Bitcoin, they went to gold, they went to bond. Now Bitcoin was the strongest. Uh, gold was in the middle and, and the bond was the weakest. Okay. But my question is what is going to happen when things calm down? Okay. So, you know, if you listen to a lot of people, pundits, they keep telling you, well, it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. I don't think so. I think we've probably seen, I mean, we, we're going to see some ripples. We might see, you know, we're going to see some stresses in the system, maybe another bank failure here, there, but we're not, I don't think we're going to see this massive cataclysm that people keep talking about. And so the question is when it calms down, who is going to remain on top? So I have I have an image here of the three, the big three. We'll talk about this more this weekend. But you have Bitcoin here, 47%. So gold is 9.4 and the 10 years, 3.2. Now, obviously, these are weighted a little bit differently. The bond is, you know, the, the, the margins are a little bit different. But the point is, Bitcoin had the largest surge of any of them. And so, you know, people talk about Bitcoin, it's got to keep going down, it's got to test the 17,000. It doesn't have to do anything. Markets can do whatever they want to do. And I think we should follow, <laughs> I think we should I'm follow sure the pattern. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, and, and, and I also would point out, people assume that gold just has to keep going up. It doesn't have to keep going up. Markets can go up and they can go down. And I'm seeing a lot of people just assuming, oh, you just, you have to own gold and it's very author, mm -hmm. very authoritarian. Oh, you just you have to own it, and it's just part of the portfolio, and it's got to go up. So, I'm mm -hmm. seeing a lot of over uh, bullish sentiment on gold. Now, the ten-year was a flight too, but I want you to notice these trend these trend lines here. Take a look at this. You can see these divergences here. They're already starting to fade out here. Bitcoin is holding up the best. Now, gold had a nice rally today, uh, but gold is on a slightly negative tilt here. And the 10 year has really come down here. This is the 10 year, this is the note, this is in the bond, but you can see here that this is tilting down. So we're starting to see things calm down. So my question to people is, what is gonna happen when things calm down? When we realize that, hey, there's no inflation. Hey, the banks are okay. Hey, is are people really gonna be wanting to run to gold uh -huh. or are we gonna go back into equities, into Bitcoin? So I think flight to quality, all of these check the bill for that, but really, uh, Bitcoin has proven to be a very good inflation hedge, especially during COVID. Now, gold through the years, if you go back to the 70s and 80s, gold was an excellent, excellent inflation hedge. It didn't do so well during COVID. So I put here previous because it kind of didn't really prove itself during COVID. Gold was actually one of the poorest performing commodities during COVID. And it should have been the highest, right? It should have been up there with Bitcoin, but it wasn't. So um, 
Bitcoin also has a, so it has these three. We'll get back to this after. Well, I, I'm sorry I missed that last part because I was going through the one ends. Sure. I'm going to figure out what I'll be doing in my next career. <laughs> I'll be right back with Shane Smolin, the Wolf Trader.com, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, with the Wolf Trader, Shane Smoy. Uh, Shane, we've got six requests. If you could... Uh, uh, follow up at 2.30 to do another half hour segment to go through this again. They really liked it. I would, Larry, I would love to. I got to pick my daughter up from school. <laughs> I'm oh, uber dad. I've, I've become now uber you, dad at 2.30. Uh, go to the family ahead of TFNN again. All right. <laughs> this will be the last time we hear you. I can you. come back. I, can, I have, no, a, I mean, no, I can. No, 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 no. I understand. I understand. Hey, listen. I can come back tomorrow uh, or whatever if you want. No, I mean, tomorrow we've got Mike Moore, but maybe later we'll have, you know, but this is all good stuff. And uh, I'm going like to talk said, about this on Saturday. The basic gist of this is, I guess just real quick as a preview here, that Bitcoin can take on all types of meanings. Bitcoin is a store of value. It's also a currency, the flight to quality, inflation hedge. And then, I, you know, if things calm down, I think Bitcoin has the potential to rally right up there with the S&P and just keep heading higher and higher. And, and so Bitcoin changes its meaning and it can become a risk on asset. Gold does not become a risk on asset and the bond does not become a risk on asset. So to me, Bitcoin is very attractive right now. We talked about this back in in January. We were on the S&P newsletter. I, I, to, I told everybody, I said, that's it. It's resolved its divergence. Bitcoin's at a low. I still think this thing's going higher, Larry. And I think the S&P is going to go higher with it. 
Okay, buddy. Listen, well, I'm uh, going through the one ads here today, but there's not much available for someone uh, that's uh, approaching 90 years of age in, in, in seven more years. Anyway, listen, thanks for joining us, buddy. I, I really do appreciate it. You have great work. Uh, your seminars that you give on the weekend are they're, they're just fabulous. You, you just do. Thank you. Such a great job. I try. And, I try. We try to. Talk, oh, yeah, it's, it's hard the, to come up with it, different topics. You know, like each well, week I have something is. a little hey. bit different, but I think the big uh, but, three is a yeah. big topic because. How, you know, if we get another, I'll say this to people out there, if we get another little banking crisis here, which we could get some more failures, look at how they react. And if gold doesn't react as strongly on the next round, that's a big flag, a big warning flag about gold. And I, like I said, I really like Bitcoin and S&P at this point going forward. All right, my friend. Thank you for joining us, folks. And we'll, Always a uh, pleasure, Larry. You bet. We'll have you on again soon, my friend. I will take a little break here folks we'll be back with the second segment of 24 7 trade what you see not what you think we'll be right back <laughs> 